Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a, a lovely morning. It's a beautiful sunshine right now. Looks like spring may have sprung early, hopefully. It'd be good if it did. Um, but I hope you're having a, a good morning or a good day. Um, this morning, I'd like to talk about a subject that we all love, working. I know we all love to work. And so I thought I was going to put a little devotion about why we work. Why do we do what we do? Um, some jobs are very glamorous. Some jobs are hard. Some jobs are easy. But we all have to work. So uh, that's why we do what we do. Because working, we have to you know, pay our bills, buy our food, give our tithes. We have to uh, uh, give allowances to our children, if you do that. Um, we have to pay our mortgages. We have to pay the tax people. Um, all these things we have to do, and that's why we have to work. Um, like I say, some people enjoy their jobs, some people don't enjoy their jobs. But why do we work? Why do we work? That's the question. Well, I want to uh, read the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 4. Or no, sorry, not chapter 4. Chapter 3, sorry. Uh, verses 17 to 24. 17 to 24. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou returnest unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, and dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, to his wife, did the Lord God make our coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now let him put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent forth from the garden of Eden, to ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, he placed at the east the garden of Eden, cherubim, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep of the tree of life. <clears throat> so because Adam and Eve sinned, um, Adam now had to work, <clears throat> he had to plant, <clears throat> he had to work for the sweat of his brow. And he wasn't used to that, of course, because in the garden, everything was great, everything was perfect, he had to do some things, but I don't necessarily mean they were uh, hard for him, you know, counting the animals and taking care of the, the fruit and all of these different things. It was a joy because they were in a perfect place. But now, because of the sin, God had to remove him from the garden. And he had to work, and he had to plant, and he had to do all these things that uh, he wouldn't have been used to because of sin. And of course, his wife, of course, was told that she will bear children in pain for all time. Every woman in the world now has pain at childbirth because of their sin. And he had to go and he had to work. He had to learn all these things. You know, he was the first uh, <clears throat> employed person. <clears throat> and he had to go and plan and do all of this stuff. And um, I'm sure you, you must have found it very hard. But I'm sure God gave him the wisdom to do these things. And, uh, and it was all, all because they gave in to sin. They gave in to the lies of the serpent. And uh, then they pay the consequences of that. He clothed them. God clothed them, put clothes on them. Um, so uh, they had to learn. They had to learn all things different. And uh, you know, planting and all of these kind of things. So <clears throat> I think that's why we have to work now. Uh, because of sin, because, you know, of what uh, Adam and Eve done, it carries on, and we have to work now. Um, things have changed, and people, some people enjoy their job, they love what they do, some people not so much. Um, there's different careers that people choose, there's the big career path of being, you know, in front of everybody, or being um, doctors and lawyers and 
dentists and uh, politicians and entertain all of, all of these kind of things. Then there's those who have other jobs like washing dishes, uh, cleaning out gutters, um, all these other menial jobs that they would call them that you know most people would really want to do, but they have to do it because they have to work. Some people don't work because of different reasons. You know, um, sometimes people can't find jobs. Whatever. <clears throat> <clears throat> but the main thing I want to say to, about this is that we just don't do our jobs to pay things. There's another reason why, especially as believers in Jesus Christ, why we work. We, well, we work because we're ambassadors for Christ. For those that we work with, you know, that's our mission field, where we are. There's a lot of people that are hurting. There's a lot of people, I mean, everybody needs Jesus Christ. And so we're placed in certain jobs to do that to share our faith with people. Um, some people come from real horrible backgrounds. That's why a lot of people are miserable. That's why a lot of people have, are angry. That's why a lot of people are quiet because no one cares. But we, as children of God, we have to care. We have to love them. We have to show them that there's a better way of living and life. We should never do a job half bad. We should never complain about our jobs. We should never, you know, dislike people, talk, tease or talk about other people. Because <clears throat> we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ where we are. People need the Lord. I remember years ago, I'll tell you a <clears throat> little story years ago, what happened to me. I was working in a restaurant and um, I was on my lunch break with this other person. There were two other people in the lunchroom. And I had an opportunity to share the gospel with the one. And I was talking about the love of Christ and how he died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin and rose again and conquered death that we may get to heaven. And the, the other lady was listening. And so after the break, I went in and I had to get something out of the, uh, out of the uh, dish room. And I'm pulling this tray of things out of the dish room and it's stuck. And I got kind of angry. And I grabbed it and I threw it. And when I did that, I turned around and there was one of the women. And she said, so you're a Christian, eh? You're going to do that? And it kind of hit me. I thought... Well, first I was kind of taken aback by that and saying, oh yeah, she's right, I'm a Christian. And then I thought, you know what, I'm also a person. And we make mistakes. We do things sometimes that, because we're here, we're of the world, we, we, we do this. And uh, so I had to explain to her, you know, just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I can't lose my temper once in a while. You know, there's righteous anger and stuff. But I mean, taking something out of a, a dishwasher, throwing it, you know, maybe wasn't the best thing to do. But... Um, we have to be different, you know? <clears throat> we do our job the best that we can be, we do. We show others, and we, know we, we help others, we encourage others, we talk to, to other people. Because um, a lot of people are very quiet. When they're quiet, that means there's something wrong, they're struggling with something. And uh, I had offered opportunities working at a different job when I was security, security officer for a number of years. And I got to talk to a lot of people, especially when I worked at a hospital. And, um, in a hospital, of course, because people are sick or people are dying or whatever, you have a lot of opportunities to share with people. And um, I'm just thank God that, you know, um, we can do that. And we have that opportunity to do that. I like the song goes, you know, people need the Lord. I mean, they, there's nobody on this earth who's beyond being saved. Anybody can be saved. But we, as God's children, have to be the ones to share. You know, I remember another time when I was at work, there was a guy that didn't like me at all. He did everything he could to either try to get me angry or whatever. And uh, I prayed and prayed. I said, Lord, I need an opportunity to share with him. <clears throat> but instead of that, God just took him out of the job and he, he left. You know, because I was praying that something had to give. So that's what happened. He was taken away from the job. The job was a lot better after that. Um, so we... Uh, we have to be kind to one another. We have to encourage people that we work with. Um, we have to be the opposite of other people. You know, um, we have our jobs for more than just you know paying the bills. We have it, our mission field, like I said before, and people need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, we are called to do that. We are called to share the gospel, and even though we may not. Um, like our job sometimes, maybe it's, it's very stressful, maybe it's hard work, whatever the case may be. If we believe in our heart that God has placed into that job, then we have to be a good example to those around us. 
Um, and if you work with other Christians, too, in, in a job, you encourage them to, to uh, be able to share their faith and that they all realize that there's more to this life than living and dying. You know, there's an in-between. And that in-between, for us, is to share Jesus Christ to the world. And that's why we have jobs. That's why, you know, we need to work. Yes, there's people who can't find work, and, you know, hopefully they'll find a job. But um, we that are working, <clears throat> if there's somebody that you're working with that either doesn't like you or hard to talk to or whatever, start praying for that person. Start praying that God will touch their hearts and give you an opportunity to share with them or encourage them and say, you know what? God cares. You know, um, people are searching. You know, you may not think it, but they are searching. Um, that's why a lot of people fall into cults and all of these kind of things because they are searching for something. Or they go the opposite way and get involved with these churches that are just healthy, wealthy, and wise kind of gospel, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It feeds them. It makes them feel good. But it's not just feeling good. It's a heart transformation, but the power of the living God. And that's what they need. You know, um, <clears throat> there's always somebody out there that you know that's struggling. Or it might be a, a fellow believer who may not be growing as much or may be discouraged, because we have that too. Because we know that our, the enemy roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he devour. And that's what he likes to do. He likes to take um, little things in our past and go, yeah, but look what you did here and look what you did there. But you know that all of our sin is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing, nothing we can't do if it's in God's will for us to do it. You know, that's why we have to seek out and, and say, God, what, you, what would you have me to do? <clears throat> what would you, where, where's a place for me? Where do I fit in? And God will show you and direct you to where you should fit in. Because, you know, he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm always going to be there for you. You know, even in those times, it doesn't seem like he's there. He's working. He's doing something. We just have to keep the race, keep our eyes forward, and know that he is in control. So if we're at our jobs, do the best at our job that we can possibly be, uh, do. Um, Make people say that, hey, why do you do this? Why do you do that? And you can say, you know, it's because the love of God constrains me to do it. I have to do it because I love you. And that uh, people want to know that you're genuine. You know, not be telling a bad, dirty joke over here, then praying at lunchtime. It doesn't balance. There's no, you know, even giving thanks for your meal at work. <clears throat> say it out loud, but don't sound like both of us. You know, because you're talking to God. And people will see that you are different, you know, and you have a peace about you. That, passes, that God gives us, that passes all understanding. It's, it's his peace he gives with us. Not as the world gives, but his peace he gives to us. And he wants us to be the best we can be in Christianity. I want to leave you with a verse in Colossians. If I can find it here, bear with me. Uh, it is <clears throat> Colossians 3.23. <clears throat> Colossians 3.23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Don't try to please men, but please the Lord. Do it in a way that's pleasing to God, and um, he will bless that. You know, if our mindset is God-centered, and we, our hearts are right with him, we can move mountains, as he said. You know, we can, our, our faith can do so much, because we trust in God. So like it says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Don't do it to try to please others, but please the Lord. Do the best that you can, whatever job you have. And whoever doesn't have a job, Lord willing, you'll find one soon. <clears throat> but always be an ambassador for Christ. That's what we are when we go into this world. We serve the living Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, regardless of what others say. Because he transformed my heart, transformed your heart. He wants to do a great work. So when you go back to work on Monday or wherever you go back to work, 
Just do your best. Be the best you can be at your job, regardless if it's washing dishes or, I don't know, whatever you're doing. Um, do it unto the Lord, and he will bless you. So, just keep on pressing on, because we know that one day we're going to be gone home. And uh, that's why we have to share with so many of you as we can. But like I say, seek out someone you work with. Start praying for that individual who might be hurting or might be angry or whatever they might be. Because God can transform any heart regardless of who it is. So, thank you for this time. Pray you have a blessed day and be an encouragement to those around you. And be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because our labor is not in vain. What we do is not in vain. Because God has called us to do it. So we should be faithful and do it. So, let's pray. Father, we <clears throat> thank you again for this time, Lord. Thank you that we, the jobs that we have may we be light in the darkness. May people see the hope that is in us and glorify you. And we have opportunity to share the gospel with someone, even may lead someone to Christ. So we just thank you, Lord, for the great things you've done in our lives. And to know that you are our God and you love us. And Lord, we know that one day you're going to come and take us home. But I pray as we are here now, may we be found faithful. And we just give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>